at the going down of the sun and in the morn, we will remember them. Two of the biggest clubs in the biggest home and away game on the footy calendar. And for the first time since the year 2000, it will be a top four clash on Anzac Day. Don't those jumpers look fabulous this year? Carl Langford uh, gets to take part and he's been good enough to join us. Carl, thanks so much for dropping by. No worries, thanks Carl. for having me. How fortunate do you feel to play on Anzac Day? Oh, it's an absolute honour and privilege to be able to play, um, you know. There's such rich history, not just with the football club, but you know, it's so important for, I guess, Australia, um, representing both our, our past, our present, and uh, our future that have served the country. So, you know, individually, I just absolutely love playing in front of, you know, a massive crowd, um, and for it to really mean something to everyone. And it especially means something to you with your great grandfather having served. Yeah, yeah, my great grandfather, um, Ernie Ernie Farrow, he served in Papua New Guinea um, in World War Two. So, that's definitely something that I kind of. Uh, you know, when I'm standing out there in the final post, I kind of reflect upon him and you know, I never met him, but I've heard stories from, from my dad and I guess my old gra my, my grandparents. Um, and yeah, it's just something for me to reflect on. Do you, have you spoken to your parents about what he did in Papua New Guinea and how much he had to go through? Have they passed down the stories he brought home? Yeah, I think especially over the last week, I've kind of been doing a bit more research into it and, um, from my understanding, he contracted malaria when he was over there in Papua New Guinea. Um, he also got blown up out of a... Uh, he got blown up by a bomb um, and he uh, had shrapnel wounds, got sent back to the medical tent and, from what I know, he uh, managed to sneak out and go right back to battle. But, was he um, was he in the 39th Battalion that went up there? Do you know that much about uh, him? I think he was in the 2nd 8th okay. Battalion, so he's a Lance Corporal. Um, yeah, so there he is. Uh, before the war, he... Uh, Worked at uh, Victoria Brewery um, here in Melbourne and, um, yeah. Who was he playing for then? Uh, Victoria Brewery. So the brewery had their own footy team and uh, they managed to win a premiership and a runners-up, but uh, I think that was in about 39. I know a few teammates who would have preferred to play with the Victoria <laughs> brewery, <laughs> brewery team rather than <laughs> other... I mean, it, I, I've done the Kokoda Trail um, and it is so illuminating. And uh, Have you done it? No, I haven't. I, it's definitely something that I'd love to do, and I'd love to do it with my, my old man. Um, I think it's something that's on our back bucket list, and it's probably something I have to do after footy. Do it. Mm -hmm. you, you've got to do it. What else have you guys done that, that has actually educated you, or you feel the spirit of these, the diggers and the Anzacs? Uh, well, I guess every year, uh, any new player uh, or staff member, as we can see, um, we, get, we go off to the, the Shrine of Remembrance. We hear stories from um, past veterans. Uh, you know, the late Jack Jones, he used to always Beautiful share... Man. share yeah. Of course, yeah, he used to share his story with us just about every year. Um, and, you know, I think tomorrow we've got past players um, coming in and just sharing what, what Anzac Day means to them and their stories with it, because, you know, every player that plays um, has their own unique story. What does it mean to you? For me... It's, it's an interesting one because we're going out there to kick a footy around. Sure. Um, for me, it's actually looking at what people have done to serve the country and they actually went to war and, you know, they, 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 people have died, um, I guess, for us. And for me to go out there and just kick a footy, um, but, you know, to wear, wear the poppy um, on my chest, it's, 
I have enormous pride, and and for me as well, my great grandfather, he served. It's uh, in his memory as well. It emphasises the true meaning of the word sacrifice, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. that day. Yeah. So this time last year, you were injured with that hamstring tear, weren't you? And the team was one and four heading into Anzac Day. This year, you're absolutely flying, and the team's four and one. They're the external facts, but how different does it feel internally at Essendon now compared to 12 months ago? Uh, yeah, I guess it's totally different. Um, we're not, uh, you know, getting too ahead of ourselves at all. We are four and one, but we're under, you know, we understand that we've played, I guess, what is it, four teams that didn't play finals last year. Um, and all due respect to them, you know, they're great teams, but, you know, we've knocked off Melbourne. We've now got Collingwood that are playing really, really good football. And then in the next month, we've got the likes of Geelong, Brisbane and uh, Port Adelaide. So. Although, yes, we're four and one and we're, we're playing really good football, we understand that we've got a, a really big month ahead of us. So that means the world, though, beating Melbourne, because those, those teams which are knocked off, fair enough, they didn't play, they're great clubs, they're not great teams at the moment, but you got, then got knocked off by St Kilda, who were in good form. You needed to get a scalp of somebody who is supposedly at the top of the tree, and Melbourne is that scalp, so you must take enormous belief out of that. Oh, yeah, as a group, we, we definitely do. But I think that St Kilda game, it was almost one of those games that we had to uh, pr probably lose. Um, so we learnt so much through that game in our defensive system and our structure that we actually changed. And this is one of the things that Brad's brought into, into the club, that we're not the finished product. And each week, there's going to be different things that we need to improve on. And, um, you know, going to Collingwood, we're going to change a few things. Going into Geelong, we're going to change a few things. And we're just uh, continually improving. You say it's totally different to this time last year. Is it sounds like there's more clarity within the team. Is that fair to say? Definitely. Uh, Brad just, uh, I think he he has a unique way of being able to articulate, you know, probably difficult things to understand really simply. Um, so after a game, win, lose, draw, whatever it might be, we have a meeting and it's very, very clear on what we did right and what we did wrong. And he puts a very clear. Uh, plan in place throughout the week that we can execute those things. What's he like with this generation of footballs? We, we hear some coaches can't give it to you between the eyes and some <laughs> still want to. Uh, what's he like? Does he just go bang between the eyes with the facts? Uh, I think anyone that knows Brad, as soon as he walks in the room, um, kind of commands, uh, you know, kind of the respect of the room. Um, there's just something about him, he's a bit of an aura, just to, to speaking to, to Todd in the hallway. He reckons we've got the best version of him, so obviously 10 years at North Melbourne he would have learned a hell of a lot, as well as at the AFL, and um, you know, I'm a believer that we're getting the best version of, of Brad as well. So a bit in there, so many great coaches perform the, at their best at their second club, mm. a lot of the greats, yeah. And you've had a great start to the season, you're almost Essendon's Mr Fixit at the moment, where do you prefer to play? <laughs> Uh, I was actually talking to my dad about this today. Uh, I guess when, when you do have a, a long-term injury um, or a player that's even playing VFL, if you ask them, you know, what would you do to play AFL, uh, I guess the response is always like, I'll play absolutely anywhere and I'll do anything. And um, missing 14 weeks last year and uh, a few games in 2021, I think I've just taken on that mindset of, you know, I'm happy to be back playing AFL and I spent so much time out of the team and watching the team uh, go through the last 18 months how it is. Um, I'm just happy to be out there and uh, help them perform. I reckon he's going better than a lot of the uh, absolute tried and trusted forwards. So, yeah, stay up forward, mate. You're going pretty well there, <laughs> all right? Front runner for Brad Scott's favourite players, <laughs> perhaps? Yeah. Well, if there. you do what the coach says, yeah. you're at the front of the queue. I, I just do what I'm told. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Hey, well done. Carl, thanks so much for coming in. Good luck on Tuesday. Cheers, and thanks so much for sharing your story as well. Right, Spoke thanks, so Well played. Cheers.